Hi, I'm Colleen Pearl, the Cool Crone, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, this is going to be another short video about the uh, fallout from the election. I've been listening to a lot of different readers and astrologers, and I wanted to give you my take on what I think is going on now. It's been about a week since I recorded my last election fallout video, my resistance video. And I wanted to go over how I feel things are really falling out. Now, I've noticed that some readers are just bemoaning the fact that, uh, you know, people must have voted wrong and Kamala lost. I don't think she lost. I think that the interference was great. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to go into great detail because I don't want to get my channel uh, closed down. <laughs> but what I will do is I'd like to show you Joe Biden's chart and the chart of today and just show you what's going on astrologically because I think that might help explain what is really going on. All right, so this is Joe Biden's chart. And what I have superimposed around the outside are the planets for today. And it is Sunday, November 17th. It's almost two weeks after the election. And what I want to point out is that the sun right now is currently hovering over Joe's 12th house. The 12th house is your house for um, the subconscious, for dreaming, for doing things behind the scenes, for very private things, for dealing with people at a great distance, which he is actually doing right now, because I think he's at the G20 right now. But I want you to notice all the little glyphs and symbols in his 12th house. This is Mars, Mercury, the Sun, and Venus. Now, the Sun and Venus are conjunct. So Joe is really charming in person, and he really puts out a lot of love love and protecting the ones he loves because he's got Mars very close by there and thinking about them a lot, a daily connection, say, with his grandchildren. He just really thinks about people a lot. He cares about the people who are in his family and are close to him. Uh, this never goes away. This is the core of who he is, and it's very close to his rising sign, but his rising sign, of course, is in the first house but it's in a different sign from these planets that are his very personal planets. This makes Joe actually a very, very private person, but it also means that he does his best work behind the scenes. He does his best work not out in public. And I think this also with this Sag rising, Sag, Sagittarians can also be known as, a, as the clown, you know, the, the show off, the entertainer, the person who loves to take a, tell a joke and even takes a joke on themselves pretty well. So Joe has this reputation of for gaffes, right? Well, I think he thinks that's kind of funny because he's just probably very grateful that he does not have the reputation for not being able to speak at all because of his stutter. I think having the reputation of gaffes or, you know, telling jokes or whatever is just great with him. Plus, it's a good smokescreen for hiding all of this very serious stuff that's going on behind the scenes. So in my opinion, he is doing everything that he can behind the scenes to save our country from going down in flames and being handed on a silver platter to a dictator. I don't think he's going to let that happen. I have to believe that. He also is given a lot of power here with Mercury and Pallas Athena in his first house right now. So whatever he's doing at the G20, well, for one thing, he has the ear of some pretty intelligent world leaders that he could confer with. But for another thing, he is going to be very effective and very on point with what America's message is to those leaders. So I think he's going to have a really good time at that conference. Venus is transiting his second house, so he's okay. Uh, as far as feeling good, feeling feeling uh, uh, positive and confident about his own abilities. It's just he's in a good place right now, except for this issue with 
the election. So another chart that I want to show you is the United States right now. So here's the United States with the rising sign of Sagittarius. Now it's a little bit different degree than Joe's, um, so it's not exact, but this allows Joe to really understand the values in general of the United States. Like he just fits into that like hand in a glove. And right now for the country, we are experiencing this uh, Mars-Pluto opposition, which even as, as Pluto sticks here and um, uh, Pluto goes into Aquarius, we still have the opposition with Mars who is currently traveling um, forward yet, yeah, hasn't gone retrograde yet. In the house for open enemies, we have the moon and Jupiter. And Jupiter is sitting right on top of the natal Mars for our country, which is not good. This, is mean, this means that we are going to be overly aggressive in our response to things having to do with foreign countries. Now Mars and Pluto, you would think is a big signal for war, but that's not the big signal I'm worried about. It's this, Saturn following up to Neptune. This is an aspect that has been uh, present in many wars in our past. So I'll have to do a follow-up video on that. But we've also got transiting Uranus moving up from Algol and into, which is our, in our sixth house and moving into the seventh house. Now, God only knows what's gonna happen when Uranus hits our natal Uranus. I really don't know. But by that time, Jupiter will have moved past um, Mars and probably into our eighth house and into, you know, smoother waters here. Jupiter is a little weak in Cancer. It's not super strong. It's very weak in Gemini because it's in the house of its um, fall. So that's what I have to say about the United States. And uh, let me see if we can pull up some other charts here and just get a bead on what's happening there. Okay, I have pulled up the chart for DJT Orangina with the transits for today going around his chart. And he has Mars in his first house, tra well, transiting Mars coming into his first house um, where he has Pluto, which um, I don't think that's really great to have Mars come up on your Pluto. I don't think it's very comfortable. He has Saturn in his eighth house, which means that he's being restricted with his money. And we know that's true. That has been going on for a, like a year and a half. Um, transiting Pluto is on the cusp of his seventh house. So this is really not comfortable. This is gonna be like for the rest of his life because he's already almost 80. So Pluto's gonna be in Aquarius for about 20 years. So this is gonna be, I think, for the rest of his life. He's going to have Pluto just plaguing him, dogging his heels when it comes to anything having to do with partnerships or anything like that. And because he works his business like a mom and pop shop, that means, you know, pretty much all his family members are, he's going to have this Pluto energy coming in and digging up anything that's illegal or corrupt or whatever and exposing it. And he's going to have to pay fines and you know, there'll be other planets coming through his eighth house at certain times, and he'll just have to pay the piper. Now, he was born on an eclipse. Um, you can tell because the node is here next to his sun, and it's straight across the sky from the moon. And right now, the sun is transiting his fourth house, which has to do with um, the real estate that he lives in and that he owns. He doesn't have any planets there, but it would be ruled by Mars, which is here right on his ascendant. So essentially, he is where he lives. Wherever he lives, that's his little kingdom. And, um, you know, he just, he, he really needs a lot of adulation. It's very sad. Um, the moon is um, up here in his 11th house, uh, coming close to Jupiter. Jupiter is currently just coming upon his uh, Sun-Uranus conjunction which triggers the uh, opposition between his sun and his moon and makes everything bigger. So 
I think that with this making everything bigger and because he has a conjunction with Uranus, I think this also um, jangles his, his mind and his, the way that he looks at reality. I think right now he's not really in reality totally. I think that's why we're not seeing speeches. We're not seeing him talk in public. I would love to have been a fly on the wall to see how he behaved with uh, President Biden. I know they probably only showed the best clips, you know, that made him look the most sane on television, but I don't know. I would have loved to have seen that in person. He has Saturn conjunct Venus, which always means for him, he's always making up for something. He's always compensating for something because he really doesn't love himself and he really doesn't feel that he's worthy of actual love. So he's always worried about that and asking people to prove their love to him. Uh, that's why you have the loyalty tests and such. Not a really great period in life for him. His Saturn is... Um, in a very, well, it's in a difficult place. It has been, and even when it was in the seventh house, that was a difficult place. But again, as it comes up close to this Neptune, I'm just worried about what could happen for him. And finally, I think we'll just take a peek at Kamala. And here's the chart for Kamala for this same day. We have Uranus conjunct Algol, very close to her first house, but not close to her ascendant, which her ascendant has the um, North Node conjunct to it. So she definitely has a destiny and she feels a sense of destiny. And I do believe that having the outcome of the election be so unexpectedly bad I do feel that this um, caused her to feel bad, to feel really deflated. But I think she's a fighter and she's getting back up on that horse and she's going to ride it again. Now, right now, today, the moon and Jupiter are going through her first house coming up to her ascendant. So I think that that Jupiter coming up to her ascendant is going to give her a big boost. And I think that that's going to help her rally and get her joy back and get her feeling like, yes, I can. I have to get up on the horse and do it again. Uranus is going to hang back here in her 12th house for a while because Uranus is moving really slow. I think it's still retrograde. Yeah, it's retrograde. So it's actually going to be moving back into her 12th house a little bit more. Uh, Jupiter, oh, Jupiter is retrograde. So Jupiter is going to stay in that first house for a little while while it goes through the retrograde period. What else is retrograde? Uranus, Jupiter, Neptune is retrograde. So it's going to be hanging out there. Saturn is finally moving forward. And so Saturn will be catching up to Neptune uh, over the next few months. Not right away. It's too slow moving. But I just wanted you to see that she's very clear in what she's doing. Now, she does have Jupiter in the 12th house which um, Uranus is stimulating right now. Um, so she can also wield her legal magic behind the scenes. This is something that she kind of has in common with Joe Biden, although for him, he has so much uh, planetary energy in the 12th house. It's really a superpower for him. She has um, Sun in the fifth house in Libra, opposing her Aries moon. This person knows how to fight. She knows how to use the system to fight. She knows how to fight with words. She also knows how to fight as a woman. She's pretty balanced with her planets. So her yin yang is really good, really tight. She understands who she is and what she is doing. Her Saturn is up here approaching her midheaven, very tight to it, but in the ninth house in Aquarius. So as we come into the Pluto and Aquarius age, I feel that she's going to do much better than DJT. DJT's Pluto is in Leo. That's where my, my Pluto is as well. And when Pluto is coming into Aquarius, that's its opposite sign. So that's not going to be easy for people in power. For me, it's, you know, going to be Wednesday. For most people who are in power, though, in positions of power especially, that's going to be a challenge. So that's not going to be great. 
back to Kamala. Her Mars is in the third house, which means that she's going to be very good at digging into all the facts and researching and fighting and, you know, um, nailing down legal precedent. She's going to be doing some good stuff. The one thing that I do think that is really going to be difficult is once Mars is totally opposite of Saturn. So let's see when that happens. And I checked the dates on that and Saturn and Mars will not be totally in opposition until August of 2025, I believe. Yeah, August 9th, 2025. So I think that that might be a point in time that is significant for her because it's going to um, it's it's going to mimic some of her planetary arrangements in her chart, and um, because it's going to be in Aries, so it's going to be in the early signs of Aries and Libra. No planets there, but by the time that comes around, there may be transiting planets there. But that opposition mirrors her sun-moon opposition of her natal chart. So I think that's when she might step up to a position of great responsibility in August of 2025. So that's what I'm saying. All right. So I just wanted to bring that to all of you that while you're not hearing anything in the news about any of this that's going on, astrology is hard at work showing you that, uh, yes, indeed, things are happening. Things are happening behind the scenes uh, by the good grace of Joe Biden. And um, we'll see what happens with everybody else. In the meantime, keep calm, stay cool. Take a look at my uh, meditation from last week, um, Reveal the Future. Cal it was a calming uh, energy for everyone to just envision a bright future and try to focus on the positive. We're also going to be having a special bonus reveal the future on Tuesday, November 26th, right before Thanksgiving, when we are going to focus our light and love on everybody who needs it right now, which is probably you. So take care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.